Buying a house is so stressful. There's so many mistakes that could be made. I mean, at least it can be stressful, right? If you're not doing the right things, if you're not getting the right knowledge, there's just so many things that could go wrong. Well, in this video, I'm gonna be talking to you about the big mistakes that I'm seeing buyers make when it comes to purchasing a house in 2024. All right, let's get started. All right, my name is Christy Lee and I am a local real estate agent in the state of Colorado, but I am actually here just to help you in general Figure out what mistakes not to make. The biggest one is not getting pre-approved. It's so amazing when people reach out to me and they're not pre-approved. Like, how are we supposed to find a home unless we know exactly what you're approved for, what you can afford? I mean, I would hate to start showing you homes all over the state of Colorado and then find out, you know what, maybe, maybe that's kind of out of your price point or maybe we could be looking at different different price points home, maybe a little bit more. More importantly though, what I'm actually finding is people are are going towards like, they say, let's just say you get pre-approved for $500,000. Like that's amazing, right? 500 grand, that's amazing. But that monthly payment might be super, super high. So what I'm finding is maybe we shouldn't be looking at $500,000 homes we need to start paying more attention to your monthly payment and what you could afford there because there's so many things that go into play when it comes to monthly payments as well. So biggest tip right here is figuring out what you can afford monthly, not paying more attention to your max loan amount because honestly, you may not wanna pay that amount. So when it comes to monthly monthly payments, talk to a lender obviously, but figure out you know, when we're looking at homes, is there an HOA? Because a lot of HOAs, I mean, I've seen them as high as $500 a month. That's going to significantly change your monthly payment, as well as taxes. Taxes in different areas are going to affect your loan amount as well. So obviously, if you're just paying attention to that max loan, you're not going to really get the full picture. Let's t- pay more attention to your monthly payment and figure out how much that's going to be and then find the loans or the houses available within that price point. All right, so the second one is holding out for perfection. I see this all the time. And really, I see a lot more with first-time home buyers because obviously, don't get me wrong, we all want what we want, right? And there's a lot of times we just don't want to settle. We know that that house is going to be out there. That whole gem is going to be waiting for us at some point. And maybe at some point it is. But maybe that house that you're looking for with all the amazing things maybe out of your price point, or maybe it's just not even around right now. What I find is that people are holding out for that most perfect house and and ignoring all the other houses that are almost perfect and within their price point. Uh, so that is the biggest thing because the longer you hold out, first off, couple things, the longer you hold out, one, you're, you're losing all these other homes in the meantime that, you know, maybe could be perfect if you just you know went into those ones and maybe did a little bit of renovating or added a little tlc to it and it could be that perfect home but if you wait longer and longer and longer there's so many things that can happen first off housing prices will go up they always do so on average roughly three to five percent year over year depending on the year of course but also interest rates so you know obviously interest rates are in flux You know, we never know what's going to happen. But if you wait, who knows? Like maybe, yeah, maybe the interest rates will come down, but you're looking for that perfect house six months from now, that perfect house, interest rates are down. Now you have more buyers out there looking at that perfect house too. So there's just a lot of things that are going to go into place. So you know what? What I recommend doing is having a list. Let's just say there's 10 things. And maybe if we could come up with like the top six or seven that, you know, maybe this house has at least the top six things that you really like and you can budge on that, you know, four, that's going to be honestly a perfect house for you. All right. What I do find very unfortunate and what I feel like age, so real estate agents, obviously, yes, we want to sell homes. That is our job, but it's also our job to talk to you about how much you could afford. So yeah, the lender's going to pre-approve you. We've already gone through that, but I'm not going to want to show you homes that are going to be on the high end of your budget unless you're really, really sure, because I don't want you to be house poor. I don't want to be house poor and I don't want to sell a house to somebody who is like, this is stretching it. Like this is way out of my price point. I'm approved for it, but it's way out of the price point. And now all of a sudden you're going to be house poor. And if you're somebody who likes to travel or, 
you know, have a bunch of toys or whatever it might be. Now all of a sudden you can't do those things because now I've just sold you a house that's way out of your price point. So honestly, pay attention to that. Don't pay attention to, you know, on all the glittery, the, the new, like all that amazing things, that perfect house, because if you buy out of your budget, honestly, you're going to be miserable. And I would hate to see that. And I whole consciously cannot feel right about buy or selling you a home that that's out of your price point. Like it just doesn't make me feel good if I know you're going to be house poor, knowing full well you have a whole other life that you want to live as well. So just be mindful of, you know, yes, you're approved for $700,000. That's amazing. But that doesn't mean you need to buy a house at $700,000. That just doesn't. Let's figure out where you feel comfortable and then find that house based off of that. All right, and lastly, and I feel like this is just common sense, but I mean, who knows, is definitely use a, lo a local real estate agent. Find somebody that you can trust. These people, like myself, know the market. We know the areas. We absolutely know what it takes the ins and outs of going through a contract, there's so many things that you don't know. So if you try to buy a house without an agent, there's so much negotiation, documentation, paperwork, inspections. There's just legal stuff. There's so much stuff that goes involved in the, the buying process that buying is, it's, or selling for that matter, is already stressful enough. Like, let us take it over for you. Let us help you through it. It's already a roller coaster ride, let alone now all of a sudden you want to try to do this on your own. It's worth every penny. Now with an R settlement, there are, you know, there are going to be some things and you may or may not need to pay for your buyer's agent. And that's something that you need to talk to your agent about anyways. Um, that's going to be just across the board nationwide. That'll be a, a thing that needs to be had. But honestly, don't do it alone. Like it's worth every penny. And I'm not just saying this because I'm an agent. I truly, even prior to becoming a real estate agent, would have never but purchased a home without representation. There's things to be said, things in this contract that you need to know. And that's what we are here for. So those are the mistakes I'm finding in 2024 when people are purchasing a home right now. Please reach out to me anytime. I love talking to you. Please you know, leave a comment there if you have any questions or concerns or feedback, anything like that. I'd love to hear from you. And then to the next video, take care.